name is Melissa Creamer. I am one of the authors and co-authors of the Listos IPA packs from Teachers Discovery. And I'm going to follow up my colleague, Elaine, who talked to you a little bit about what the IPAs are. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the IPAs are not. The integrated performance assessments are not designed to be busy work. It's not something that you can leave for the students on Monday or give them on Monday and then collect on Friday. Um, they are something that you can use throughout the whole quarter, um, but you should work through them with the students providing the necessary feedback. Um, the next thing that they are not is they are not used for formative assessment. They should not be used as a daily formative. Um, when you give the IPA at the end of the quarter, that should be your summative assessment because it's to show you what the students have learned over the course of the quarter through the practice activities that you are giving them. And these assessments are designed to be given um, to show growth. So you want to give one at the end of the quarter um, so that the students can show you how they've grown over the six weeks or nine weeks that you've been working with the material. Um, it's not something that you can do in a day because the integrative performance assessments have three tasks. The first task being a listening or a reading. Um, the listening or the reading could take them a whole class period, depending on the length of your class period. We have 50 minute class periods in our school. So we give the students one full class period to do the listening or the reading part of the IPA. We then follow it up with either the uh, interpersonal speaking or writing, um, and then later the presentational speaking or writing. They are also not meant to be isolated. The IPA that you give um, should be based on authentic resources. Um, there should be a connection, a theme between the different tasks. You don't want to give a reading or a listening on ordering in a restaurant and then give them an interpersonal speaking about their school class schedule and then have them do a presentation on exercise. You want your tasks to relate together. Um, you don't have to use just one authentic resource. You could have a reading and a, a listening, but they should have a common theme or a common topic. So some advice for how to use the IPAs in your classroom. Um, my biggest piece of advice is make small changes. Um, when you start to use an IPA, you don't have to switch from a textbook directly to the IPA. You can add IPA style activities into your textbook unit and then eventually work your way uh, away from the textbook, focusing more on the IPAs. Um, the other thing that you don't want to do is that you don't want to do a lot of IPAs. You don't want to do um, a different IPA every day or even every week. The goal is if you don't do them ch or change your IPA frequently, um, it allows them to show you their growth. So what I do with my IPAs is that um, I start off with the vocabulary activity, and what I like to do is I find an authentic resource that is similar to the authentic resource that will be part of the summative IPA. So we start with the summative IPA, we design that first, and then we work our way backwards um, into the activities that we're going to use. So I like to try to find something that is similar to the piece that we'll use in the summative assessment. And I start with the vocabulary. I start with the keyword section and work my way from there. When they do the keyword section, I like for the students to take the time to first, if it's a reading, I make sure that they number their paragraphs. And then I have them go through and find the keywords. Once we go over them, annotate them, we look at the context around them. And then I like to do activities with the vocabulary. When they come in the next day, their daily warm up will be an activity involving that vocabulary. We will continue to use it in uh, several activities just so the reinforcement is there. They can be familiar with that vocab because that vocab should be similar to the vocab that they'll see in the summative assessment. 
Um, when we do the activities, sometimes I have them work in pairs. Sometimes I have them work in a group. Um, if they work in a group, I will then have the group share out loud or share on the board. When we do the main idea, sometimes I'll have them work as a group and then I'll have each group share their main idea out loud and we'll take parts and pieces from each group to build what I call the ultimate uh, main idea statement. Um, and then I sometimes will change the way that we present the activities with the cultural comparison, for example. Uh, sometimes I will give them a Venn diagram or a chart where they can jot down their thoughts or ideas before they put them on paper. Um, so there is some flexibility with them. Um, sometimes I will combine a reading and a listening together. If I find a video on YouTube and there's some written dialogue that goes with it, um, I will combine the two together within the IPA. Um, if I find an infographic and the infographic is part of an article, I will combine those two pieces for the IPA. So it doesn't have to just be one resource. Um, a lot of times when you find a resource or you find your website, there will be several pieces connected to it that you can use and turn into IPA style activities. One of the main reasons why we use IPAs is to gain and maintain student interest. The IPAs should use an authentic resource that's based on current or somewhat current events and that should gain their interest, maintain their interest throughout the quarter in hopes of uh, keeping them motivated. Another reason why we use the IPAs is because the authentic resource allows for real world application. Um, these uh, assessments also allow students to show you what they can do and they are not focused on what they just know. So for example, if your students know food vocabulary and know basic phrases for ordering in a restaurant, they can then show you that they know how to have a conversation with a waiter or a waitress. They can order their food, they can ask for substitutions, they can ask for um, additions to their meals, they can ask for a refill. Um, so these are real world scenarios that they might encounter. Um, another idea is an airport. They can show you that not only do they know the vocabulary for the airport and for traveling throughout an airport, but they could have an interpersonal conversation um, about what to do if you are lost in the airport and you're looking for your gate or how to get through security. Again, real life uh, scenarios, real life application. Another thing is that um, students are sometimes more comfortable when they are speaking with a peer rather than one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. So for the interpersonal part, it allows them for that comfort level. And I also think it allows for them to be more creative in their presentational speaking or writing. Um, so, and you as the teacher can really focus on uh, what they were able to do and not so much on what they didn't know. Thank you so much for listening. Please check out our integrated performance assessments on the Teachers Discovery website or in the catalog. They are part of a series called Listos IPA Packs, and we have them for the novice and intermediate levels. We are also working on a new series called the Beginner Series, and these are IPAs designed for the novice low uh, Spanish one students. So check them out. Thanks.